6D6 um, by Amar Rava. It's four lines from the end of B, end of 66B. Rava, Amar Rava, Rava says, Isha leishamay al gabi kecheres fitful. A woman should not stand on earthenware vessels when she's immersing in the mikvah. What's the concern? We'll see in a moment. Sava Rav Kana Lameima Rav Kana thought to say Taima. What's the reason why Rav is saying this? Mishum Taima Maim Mishum Gzeir Shemachatzayis because it's similar to a bathhouse. Now, a mikveh is not, a bathhouse is not necessarily a mikveh. It could be a kosher mikveh, but it's not necessarily a kosher mikveh. And there's a concern that she may think that it's going to be, a bathhouse is going to be a kosher mikveh. Because she does the same thing in the mikveh as she does in the bathhouse. Now, what's in the bathhouse? Rashi says that in the bathhouse, they would have some sort of steps that they would sit on when they would bathe. So it's just some sit on this, these sort of um, steps, earthenware steps. Tysus says that they would have these earthenware vessels in the bathhouses because they would add hot water to the bath. You would have these vessels there. So either way, whatever the concern is, but it has to do with a similarity to a bathhouse, and we don't want the mikveh to have that uh, that similarity. So hal gabi silta shaper But if it would be not a, a vessel, these earthenware vessels, it would be a either a log. Silta, I looked it up in the gesture. It means either a, a log, which that's how Rashi translates it also, or he also says it can mean a bread basket. <laughs> but um, either way, it's not something that would be in the bathhouse. <laughs> Silta nami de isa. That's not the pshat. You, you, gotta, you didn't understand it correctly. It's, it doesn't have to do with a similarity to a bathhouse. It has to do with she may not be relaxed when she's going to the mikvah she'll do it too uh, hastily because she's scared of something or whatever it's maybe a uh, flimsy or whatever it is she's afraid she's going to fall she's going to bathe quickly and she really won't have gone under properly she's going to have these concerns so the going to the mikvah has to be in, in a way where we're sure that she did a, a good tefila. we're going to see later and today what position She's what, supposed they, to what was the word they used here when they said give a person a fright? And they, and they have a, a yeah, also, um, was that the word? Basa. Basa. So wouldn't they, that be the question here then? Does she get a fright? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, no, yeah, it, no, that's, it's, that's not really the concern. Well, I'm, I'm maybe that's a, new, that's a new shot. <laughs> but um, the way the Rishayim are learning is that She's going to be afraid, and she won't go to the mikveh properly. Amr Shmuel Bar Yitzchak usually took both the normal. Shmuel Bar Yitzchak says a woman, a woman should not go to the mikveh on the port. That's where all the boats are. Now, what's the concern about that? So there's two interpretations here. Rashi's interpretation which actually fits with our text of the Gemara, is that where the boats are, there's some sort of tar that could get on their, on their feet or something. And the Gemara then continues and says, even though when she comes out, you don't see any of the tar. Ema barad yuni nafal. Barad yuni means, Rashi says he doesn't know, but it seems like some sort of um, shaking of the feet. It would, have, it would have made it fall off. And so it could be that it was on her while she was in the water. It just came off now when she, as she's getting out. Um, there is a little bit of an issue here because um, Mita, uh, what, how do we say in Mishnayas before we, before the last Kanish? Um, how do you, 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 how do you,
So what's the concern over here about the tit? Over there, the Mishnah says that you can be chaypal a bed, even though the legs of the bed are going to sink into the ground, but it doesn't matter because the water was covering the legs before they sunk in. So what's the issue over here with the tit as she's going in? So it must be that there's tit before they get in. Must be a tit on the beach, on the or on the uh, whatever. Tesis and the other Rishonim discuss this. There is one other shot over here, and we don't want it to use the mikveh to use the port as a mikveh. The Nechananos shot is because there's going to be people that are there, and she's going to be ashamed, and she's going to want to go very quickly, like in and out, without a. It doesn't fit the next line. No, it doesn't fit the next line. So Rabbi Nechananel does away with that by adding in extra words mm-hmm. that, in other words, go like this, if you look at the top places, he says um, that Mafshela says that a woman uh, that puts a baby on her back when she's going to the mikvah and she goes into the water, it doesn't help. Um, because maybe on the child there was tit. And it got stuck to the mother. I, when she gets out, it's not there. Maybe it fell off as she's getting out. So if you add in another line, you don't have to take anything out. You add in another line, and then the, the Gemara fits with that. Okay. They say they asked the Gary Rebbe what uh, kapana you should have when you're dipping in the mikra. He said, Bus schneller a rice. He's ha- how to get out of here quickly. <laughs> That's the kavan, because there was there was an issue of people sitting in the water, yeah. you know, and soaking it, and also like modesty issues, or just hanging around over there. Okay, Avuad the Shmuel, Shmuel's father. Avuad lebin say mikvayis biyemi nisan umafti biyemi tishrei. He made for his daughters, I guess that means Shmuel's um, sisters. Mikvois during the days of Nisan, and he made mats during the days of Tishrei. Now the explanation is like this: you could you could go to the mikveh in a river, as long as you don't have. You see, there's a problem with moving water. If the water is flowing, it's not a mikvah. However, that's if the water came from rain. <coughs> if it's rainwater, it can't be moving. But if it's coming from a spring, a mayan, then it can be moving. So like, for example, the Arizal's mikvah, you go over there, the water is mm-hmm. coming in and it's coming out, but that's because it's coming from a spring. Under, in the mountain, there's a spring that it's coming out. But if you have a mikvah that you go in, you can have a concern if the water's filled to the top and you go in and it's, as you dunk, the water's flowing out because of the, the, so it's flowing, it can't, <coughs> if there's a leak in the mikvah, then um, that would be an issue because the water is flowing. So if you have a river that that it's coming from a spring, the problem is is that it's there's melting ice or the snow is melting now because it's the days of Nisan. It's the spring season, not coming from a spring. It's the it's the season that the that the uh, the rainwater is now coming into the moving rainwater is coming into the river down the mountain. So that there's a concern if you're gonna go into that water that you're going into rainwater that's moving. So the Yoimi Nisan, Shmuel would have his daughters use the mikvah, use a mikvah, not the, not the river. Okay. And then Yoimi Tishrei, when there was no concern of that because there hasn't been rain all summer, so then they could go into the river, so he would prepare mats for them to be able to walk on so their feet don't get the, the tar or whatever there is by the river. So he would prepare mats in Tishrei and he would prepare a separate mikvah in Nisan. There is another interpretation here, and that is that the matzi, the mats, is not for the feet, it's the mats are for, for tznias, it's mm. of uh, mechitzas, like um, partitions, so that you know, they should be comfortable going in the water and not feeling that they have to rush because people are going to see them. Not like the Gareb. 
<laughs> but but where where's the Mahitsi, the bathhouse or where? Here it would be by the river. Oh, by the river. It would be by the river. Wouldn't be the stuff that flows. No, but that it's won't work. That season. Right. So it's normal. Yeah, it's not rain water. Right. How do they have separate beaches in Israel? How do they do that? Is there a Mahitsa somewhere? All the way into the water. Mm -hmm. And it goes out. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So, Amarav Gidl Amarav, Rav Gidl says in the name of Rav, we've, we've had this before, this combination of Gidl, uh, Rav, student Rav Gidl. Nasna Tapshul Livna, she gives food to her son, the Tavla, and then she goes to the Mikvah, but also, and she gets out, Layosul Tvila. It doesn't help. The mikveh didn't help. Afagav the hashteleka, even though now she seems clean. But Ema Braduni Nafal, it could be that she had some of the particles on her. And it fell off as she's getting out of the water. Is that how they translated it? Sticky food. Sticky food. Sticky food. Sticky food. She didn't examine she herself, examined herself then that would be right. different, right? I'm a Rami Bar Chama. You switch it over here, Chama. Hani Rabdi de Kusilta. This is, these are scabs, but I, when I looked it up in the Jastro, he says it's um, cicatrix. Doctor, you know what that is? C I C A T R I X. I figured that would be a word that you would like. It has to do with the healing scab. Sure, so it's a bloodletting. Aha. Uh -huh. But so it's a scab of bloodletting. <coughs> so these scabs, if it's the first three days, they're not hard. They're still soft uh, um, <coughs> tissue. And it's not a chatzitza, but mikan ve'ela chaiti. After three days, then it is a chatzitza. What they do today is if they can remove a scab, they soak it until it gets soft. And then they can. But the dafyami is not a halachish. I'm a marukva. Marukva says, lif lif sheba'ayin, if there's like a pus around the eye. So that's if it's lach, if it's wet, then in a chaitzitz, it's not a chatzitza. Yavish, if it's dry, then it's chaitzitz. Then it is a chatzitza. Chatzitza means it's an interruption in between the, uh, <coughs> the water and his skin and his body, or her body. It's actually, there's a, a big machlekes here in Rishonim. If all of these halachas that we're learning are relevant for a woman that's going to a mikvah, or if it's for taras, there may be extra chumras that we have for the taras, as opposed to a woman going to a mikvah for us, and it means maybe different uh, halachas there. And one of the issues here is that there's, it says, Isha Leititbal. And it says, Nasna Tavshal Levna. We have all of these. If it would be for Taharis, yes, a woman goes to the Mikvah for Taharis, but not only a woman goes mm. to the Mikvah. If it's for her husband, only a woman goes to the Mikvah. So it seems to be lending to the, that it means for it's a, a Mikvah for the husband. Okay. So, Ema Sainakar Yavish, when is it considered dry, this pas? Mishash Maschal Liyarek. When it begins to, I guess, turn green. Amr Shmuel. Shmuel says, This is some sort of like, uh, eye paint. Do they, is it, do they shadow. Shadow. Like makeup? A shadow? Shadow. A shadow. What do they say there? Or the eye left, the eye shadow. Um, blue powder down yeah. within the eye. Yeah. And what are they? Over there, number 14. It's a cosmetic powder. It was placed in the eye itself. That's what I, was saying. I didn't realize skin. that. that would, right. Yeah, so look at what it says. Mm -hmm. If it's Shabbatoicha eye, and if it's in the eye itself, ain't a chaitis, that's not a chatzitza. Mm -hmm. Why? Because probably the, the uh, moisture in the eye would, 
it was diluted enough that it's not considered a, <coughs> um, a separation. Mashal gabi ayin, but if it's on the eyelids, then it's a chatzitza. And if it's if her eyes are fluttering, I feel al gabi ayin in a chatzitza. Then it's not even a chatzitza because it's gonna like um, wash. yeah wash it off. Could mean that the tears will take the tears, the eye, uh, the tears will, will wash it off. I'm Rabbi Yechanan. Paschina Biyaser. If she opens her eyes very much, like wide, I Atzmina Biyaser. She closes them. Leyasa Latfila. It's not a good tefila. She squeezes them tight. It's not a good tefila. So it's supposed to be natural, not open and not and not um, squeeze tight. I'm Rish Lakish. Ishlei Titpal Ela Gedar Ela Derech Kedilasa. A woman should go to the mikveh. What does kedilasa mean? In a natural manner. So, so, so do they, what do they say? How do they translate that natural? In a natural manner? Natural position. Natural position. Derek means the way she's growing. But what does it mean growing? That, that you would do like with an esrig. With an esrig, you hold it up, you hold it down. It says derek kedilasa. You hold it the way, the, the lulav, you hold it the way it grows. You don't hold it down. But by a woman, what does it mean? Not so it, it means that she doesn't have to change her position to, to, to make sure the water gets in every area. In a natural manner. Kiditnan. As it says in a Mishnah, this, is, this Mishnah is about seeing Nigayim. Um, it says that a, a Tsaras needs to be on a place that the Kayan could see normally, not it's hidden inside the body in, in crevices that are normally not seen. So that's not a uh, that's not counted. Mara eni akayin. I think it says where the you see. So it says for ish near a kaider. A man is seen kaider umaisik zaysim. This is collecting um, collecting olives. The one before that is hose. Oh, ho, either is hose. Yeah. And that is that ho, a hose means the um the, the it's a yes. right. So he's doing that to the ground. He's in a position of of um like shoveling position. And that would be if he had a, a spot of saras under his armpit. So if he if the cayenne could see the spot. When he's in the position of hoeing, so then that would be considered visible. Meisikzaisim, <laughs> or he's collecting uh, olives, and that would be um, if he has in his private uh, areas stretching off. Maybe, or maybe no, maybe it probably means that he's meisik because they, they would collect him from the ground. He's bending down, and if you can see it from then, when while he's bending down, that would be considered visible. Isha um, nirika iregesu kaminikas A woman, she she is seen as if she's weaving or nursing her son. That means in just a regular uh, sitting position, and that would be considered visible. Maybe if there was a, a, a saras that was under under the breast, and she was something like that, or in her armpit, and she was weaving, she's moving arms like that, you'd be able to see uh, if it was sticking out, the tzaras. There's an interesting tesis over here. Bales Yelfusak Chal Hanishmaitze, he brings in this Pascha now, where she opens her eyes wide, because this is only Lataris, but not for her husband. Then there's a um, a discussion about if her mouth is supposed to be open. Yeah, I think she's going for the next one. Okay. Now it says, Amar Rabba Bar Khana. It's supposed to be, it's corrected on the side. Amar Rabba Bar Khana Nima Achas Kshura. There's one here that has a knot in it. That's chitzetzah. That's a chitzetzah. So when they comb their hair, 
they have to comb out all the knots. If there would be one here that has a knot, then that knot would be tight enough that the water won't be able to get in to touch that hair. <coughs> and we know that the hair also needs to go to the mikvah. It says, um, the, the Rachatz S. Besarai washes his body, and the word S teaches me S. Hatafel Besarai, what is secondary to the body. Umar says, my new Sarai means the hair. The hair needs to go to the mikvah as well. So, um, One hair is considered a chatzitza, but shalish and a chatzitza. If you have three hairs that are tied together, because you can't really make a knot with three hairs, it would, it would come loose naturally. So that's not considered a chatzitza. Three hairs together in one knot won't tie tight enough. So that's okay. And shtayim in idea, but two of them, I don't know. It's somewhere in the middle. One hair is a chatzitza, three hairs is not. What about two? We had with the, these types of questions several times already. But uh, where are we holding with two? Rabbi Yechanan Amar Ein Lano El Achas. Rabbi Yechanan says only one is an issue. For us, only one here is the issue. Once it's two, it's already not a chazitza. Am Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak says Tvar Taira. Rashi tells us it's Halacha L'Meishem Sinai based on the Gemara Sukkah that the Gemara over there is discussing that chazitza, the laws of, uh, the laws of interruption when someone goes to the mikveh is based on Halacha L'Meishem Sinai. It says, according to the Torah, Rubai Hamak Bedalav Chaitetz. Now, Rashi here and Rashi there in Sukkah, when they say Rubai, majority, it's not talking about the body. Majority of the here. And it's majority of the here that has inter interruptions, yeah, that has um, uh, it has on it knots. And the woman is concerned about it. You know, doesn't want them there, would like them to be combed out. So that's a chatzitza. Majority plus makbid. You need two of those criteria. Majority of the here, and you don't want it there. Rubai vein a makbid. Let's say, so the, those two criteria make it midairaisa, halach lamesh misinai, that the mikvah didn't work. You have both criteria. Let's say it's majority, but you don't mind it. Vein a makbid alone. It's not a big deal. There's a difference between a man and a, and a woman here. Yeah. A woman, they're much more careful about the, how they look and everything. They spend more time on that. They're, they're mocked but on much more things. By the man, he doesn't care. Uh, he has a knot in his hair. It uh, doesn't matter to him. So the, the mocked would be less, right? It could be the same amount, but he's not mocked So that's ain't a chaitzitz. That's not a chaitzitza. However, there's a gzeira there. There's a gzeira because it's rubai. It has one similarity to the, to, to the deraisa, so there's a gzeira. The gazra al niyutaya makbid, mishim rubaya makbid. Let's say the other way. Let's say there's only a little bit of interruption, but he really doesn't want it there. There's a piece of gum in his hair. Even if the man doesn't want that, um, but it's only on one piece of his ear, not on the <clears throat> majority of his ear. So that's a gzera. It's a niyot hamakvid. It's a minority, but he doesn't want it there. So the Gemara asks an interesting question. Why don't we make a gzera if there's a minority that he doesn't mind because it's similar to a minority that he does mind, or it's similar to a majority that he doesn't mind, which both of those were also awesome. The Gemara says, no. We're going to make a gzera and a gzera. It doesn't work. The way that I would do this, this you know, those, um, uh, what are they called? The Punnett Square? You know, the uh, that Mendelian, uh, um, when, you, when you, you just make a box of four, and then you put the, only one, one of them has it has everything, has the real issue. It's Rubai and it's Makhbit. It's the majority and you don't want it there. And then I have the two catty corner that are majority, but you don't mind it. And minority and you do mind it. And then I have the last corner, which is neither. You can always ask, well, the last corner is very similar to this in one way and it's similar to that in one way. You should make a Xera. It says, no, those two, 
were themselves gzeiras mm. because of it, right? They're not going to make a gzeira on that fourth uh, corner because it, it's a gzeira, it has to go one way to get, right? And it's to make a gzeira on a gzeira, it just goes on forever. Okay. Amar Rav. Rav says, Nida bismana ina tevela sela balayla. And Nida goes to the mikveh after the seventh day. She goes to the mikveh by night. I thought it was my Rav Nida. <laughs> when you learn Gemara, you read yeah. that every single time. And then you have to always keep correcting yourself. Like, where do you stop to that? So, um, she goes to the mikveh by night. But if it's not on the seventh day, after the seventh day, it could be by day or by night. You know, in Rhode Island, they had an, an old mikveh. It was called, I think it was called East Providence. Um, it was in this area that used to be the Jewish area, but it became very, very dangerous over, uh, and that's where the old mikveh was. And, and um, at a certain point, it was too dangerous to go there at night. So the, the women in Providence would go on the eighth day during the day. If you would go there at night, you went with a gun. <laughs> it wasn't, a, well, it became like a dangerous area. So that's what it would be according to this. Shalai bismana, if you go, they would go on the eighth day. They wouldn't go on the seventh night. They would go on the eighth. They would have to wait one more day. And they would go in the next morning to the mikvah. Guard with a gun. Yeah. Right. Right. The security. Yeah, this is a city that could handle that. Then it was, um, uh, it wasn't like, you know, it was called by appointment. You know, it was like it was a big deal to get it open. And then, okay. Um, so, Shalit Bismana is Bain Bayim Bin Malayla. That would be according to Rab. Rabbi Yechon and Amar Bain Bismana, Bain Shalit Bismana, and Tevela Sela Balayla, Mishum Srah Bita. Rabbi Yechonin says, you have an issue here. If, even if you're going to go on the eighth day, but the daughters are going to see mommy uses the mikveh during the day. They're going to think that it's the seventh day they can go to the mikveh. Hmm. And it's, they're not going to realize that, that the mother was using the mikveh on the eighth day. Why can't they just say Mari's night? Well, Srach is it's, a type it's, of Mari's night. Shrach Bita means that the, the daughter's going to do what the daughters do what my mother did. You know, they they they. That's that's say, oh, this is what my mother. Uh, it's what my mother would do. Va'af Rav Hadabeg, and even Rav changed his mind from that. Dam Rav Chia Barashi Am Rav Nida Bein Bismana Bein Shleib Bismana In Tevela Sela Balayla Mishum Shrach Bita that it always has to be by night. So how did they handle that? We're going to see shortly. We're going to see shortly how they handled it in those places where there was an issue. But, um, okay. Askin Rav Idi the Narish, Mitbal the Yoima, the Tamnaya. Rav Idi in the city of Narish instituted that they go to the mikvah on the eighth day during the day, Mishim Ariusa. Do they translate that as lions? Yeah. It was animals there yeah. that during the day was, was easier to go, and at night it was more dangerous. So they should go by day. <coughs> Rabbi Acha Bar Yaakov the 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 Punya Mishum Ganvi. Rabbi Acha Bar Yaakov instituted in the city of the Punya to go by day because of robbers that were there at night. And Rabbi Yehuda the Pumpadisa Mishum Tina. It was too cold at night. It's probably like uh, those cities. Like uh, it gets very chilly at night, and during the day it gets nice and warm. So. That's an issue. Maybe they won't go in properly. Rava b'machuza mishum avuloi. Rava and machuza instituted because of avuloi. Avuloi could mean that. <coughs> what is it? <coughs> it's either city guards that were non-Jewish, and they were not uh, respectable people. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Or they had. Cavern caves, you know, that were that were uh, maybe the mikvah was there it was dangerous to go in if you couldn't see it properly. It was either taverns or caverns, hmm. something like that. So they would go by day. 
Amar le Rav Papa. How is this going? Amar le Rav Papa la Abaya Barava. Rav Papa says to Abaya and Rava, he's a student of both of them. Michti. I don't know what they're doing over there. You see on the side it says la Abaya Barava. I don't know. Michti. So Idna Kulu Safik Zavis Shavinu Rab Kulu Safik Zavis Shavinu Rabbanan. What's going on? Nowadays, when a woman goes to the mikvah, she has to wait seven clean days. She's not really a nida anyway. Or she's she's not she's not really a ziva anyway. We we're machmer that she's a nida and a ziva and a zava. So we have um, the, the laws of Nida and the laws of Ziva you know, uh, imposed one over another. So, so she's waiting seven clean days. Now the rule is that a Zava is allowed to go to the mikvah on the seventh day during the day. A Nida has to go by night. A Nida doesn't wait seven clean days. She becomes Tame, and whether she's seeing for seven days or not, she goes to the mikvah after the seventh day by night. A Zava is allowed to go to the mikvah uh, during the seventh clean day. So here, where she's waiting seven clean days and she's not really a zava, so what's the problem? Let her go to the mikvah during the day. With Falina be a mama, the shvir. Where it says, and Mishum de Shimon, because Reb Shimon says, the Tanya was taught in a brisa, acher titar, acher acher lekulan, that she, afterwards, she becomes pure, after all of them. That means after all seven days, there should be no interruption in those seven days with any impurity. That after she counts the seventh day, which she does that in the morning, she can already go to the mikvah. The Gemara says, But she's not allowed to do that because it may become a doubt. Now, there's two interpretations here of Asr Chacham and Lasis Cain doesn't mean she's not allowed to use the mikvah on the seventh day, because if she sees blood after the mikvah, that would interrupt retroactively all of those days, even though she was allowed to use the mikvah, but it goes back and messes everything up. That's also Lassi's pain. Or maybe it means also Lassi's pain and she's not allowed to be with her husband. Because maybe she'll see blood after that, before nightfall. And that will mess up everything. There's two interpretations in place the same. Um, okay, so that's why even that, even today that she's a suffix zava, she still doesn't use the mikvah during the day. Now what the Gemara says, Amar Rapuna. Rapuna says, Isha chifefes ve'echad b'shabos. We're talking about, this is chafifa means um, the preparations for the mikvah where she washes her hair and she cleans her body. She's supposed to do this as a din that a woman has to clean herself, has to wash her hair before she uses the mikvah. So when does she do this? So it's supposed to be very close to her going to the mikvah. Otherwise, there's a concern she may get dirty in, the, in, the, in between. So, but there are certain times where she, we don't want her to do it in a rushed way. We want her to do it in a relaxed way. What's going to happen here is that the Isha a woman can can do the Khafifa, that means prepare herself for the mikvah on Sunday, but she goes to the mikvah Monday night. That's the third day, that's the beginning of Tuesday. Which is Why? How's how, what's your proof? Because a woman can go to the mikvah on Maitri Shabbos. When does she do the Khafifa? She does it on Friday. So you see, you can wait a day in between. Next halacha. Woman can go to the mikvah on Sunday. and go. I'm sorry, she can do the Khafifa on Sunday and go to the mikvah on Tuesday night, which is Wednesday. Because she'll do the Khafifa on a Friday. And she'll go to the mikvah on a Sunday night because Shabbos and then Yom Tif. She'll go to the mikvah on a Sunday night. And so that's the two days in between. Next halacha. 
Isha Chaifefes Vechet Peshabbos, a woman can go to the mikvah on a Sunday. Uh, sorry, prepare herself on a Sunday. And she can go to the mikvah on a Wednesday night, which is Thursday. Because a woman could do this in other situations where the calendar works out that she's doing a chafifa on Friday afternoon. And she's going to the mikvah. Not Maitzi Shabbos, not Sunday night, not Monday night, but Tuesday night. So Sunday, Monday, Wednesday night. It's going. So how is this going? Wednesday, Thursday, three days in between. When you have Shabbos, Shabbos, Sunday, Monday. So she could go Tuesday. No, no, but now we're saying no, saying. There's Shabbos or Sunday night. There's three days in between. Right. They can go on to the Wednesday. So there's three days in between. And if she goes, if she washes well, on Sunday, days, Monday, Tuesday, Shabbos. Wednesday, you go on Thursday. No, if you didn't count everything. Shabbos, Sunday, Monday. Now she can go Tuesday. <coughs> no, they're doing the day after the whole time. Why? The day after. How do you do the Ravi? Look at the Ravi. Go back to the Ravi. No, it doesn't mean, it, it means Wednesday night. But the problem is, you're right. Why should it be? She can't go, she can't do the Hafifa on Shabbos. Yeah, and she can't do it on Sunday. Sunday is, is oh. Yeah. Well, Sunday is Rosh Hashanah. And then Monday is Rosh Hashanah. So Monday night, she should be able to go. Why are we saying here that it's Wednesday night? So, it says here something, Monday I can read it out loud. A woman who can wear herself Monday night when the two days of Rosh Hashanah may be Baal Shabbos has no choice but to discover itself Friday afternoon. Thus, we may derive that it's permitted for women to discover itself Sunday afternoon. Oh, oh yes, we were mixing it up. Days so Wait, she wait, wait, wait let me explain it. We mixed the two things together. We mixed, we mixed <coughs> the, the example with the, with the mushal with the nimshal. There's a, the, the mushal is that when do we see that this is permitted where she waits Shabbos? Sunday and Monday, and she goes to the mikveh Monday night. That's three days. So too, on she, a regular weekday, she watch on she'll, Sunday. Say, she'll watch on a Sunday, and she'll go to the uh, she'll go to the mikveh. But why would but she can't watch on a Sunday? Yeah. No, 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 on a, a regular a weekday. Yeah. It's a mashal. That because we find that if there's a yomtif in between, that she can wait three days. So too, on a regular day, also she can wait three days. So it would be. It would be so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday right. and, and, and she could go to the mikvah right. Wednesday night. So there was a mashal and a nimshal there. Uh, okay. So uh, this is called, the Gemara calls this shekane. Because we find it, mm -hmm. we would like migu. You know, just like we find that she can do it there, so also on a regular day she can do it. That's the, what Rav Huna says. Rav Chizda Amar Kulo Amrinan says you're right. All of those, when they actually fall out with the Rosh, with the Rosh Hashanah and the Shabbos and the Yom Tov, those are all correct. But Shekain, Layam Rinon. But we don't say the Shekain. <laughs> Shekain in quotations, right? We don't say that just like um, this happens over there, because Hecha de Efsher Efsher, Hecha de Lay Efsher Lay Efsher. When, when you're able to do the Khafifa right next to the Tefillah, then you do it. But you don't do the Khafifa three days before, just because, well, one time uh, it worked out like that, and that's how you were going to do it. We say shikane as well. If you can do it once, you can do it. Uh, what comes to mind is shalashudis. You know, on Erev Pesach, it's impossible to wash for shalashudis. Because you can't eat matzah. <coughs> because you can't eat matzah, it's Erev Pesach. If, if, if Shabbos... If Erev Pesach is coming, you can't eat matzah because you know you're not allowed to eat matzah before the seder. You can't eat challah because it's after chatzos. You can't eat uh, challah. So from there, in Shulchan Aruch, it says that you can have um, other types of um, paris or whatever. So from that, the rest of the year we have paris, the challah shabbos, or other things. Because on Erev Pesach, it's impossible. Mm. <laughs> but well, what do we see from that? We see that that's acceptable. You see that that's acceptable, at least in Bishas of Chak. So if it's acceptable, Bishas of Chak, so you can do that other time. I'll pick up all of this reason why specifically to do that. Okay.
So, a few lishukin nami levarmi isha chetefes bechad b'shabes. He says, Rabbi Yemer says no, because it's acceptable when there's a yomtif in between. So then it's going to be acceptable even if not. However, in one case he's not accepting. That is isha chetefes bechad b'shabes. If she was going to do the chafif on a Sunday, but tevelas bechamishi b'shabes, and she's going to go to the mikvah on a Thursday, which means a Wednesday night. That's we're not going to count. That doesn't exist. He says, I, he doesn't accept that. He says, because she can really do the khafifa at night as well. No, we don't want her normally doing khafifas at night. And the reason is because she's rushing to get back to her husband. And when she has to do the khafifa at a time when she really doesn't need to be there, because she could really have gone to the mikvah already and gone home. So we think she's going to do that in a rushed manner. Because if she does the chafifa by day, like before the nightfall, and then she's going to go to the mikvah by night, she has to wait a certain amount of time until she can go to the mikvah. She, there's nothing she can rush. She's going to do it properly. Because she can't go to the mikvah till a certain time. So she'll do that right. But we don't want her specifically doing the chafifa at night when she really she could have been in the mikvah already and, and out of there. So even though she had three days for a problem to occur after she did it. So, so Rav Chizda held that he, hold, he holds that two days of Rosh Hashanah plus a Shabbos, you do it on a Friday and you wait till might see Rosh Hashanah to go to the mikvah. And Rav Yemar says, no. He says, in that instance, you just do the do it by night, even though that's not the that's not the best. But you do it by night because too many days in between. Dorosh Mareimar, Mareimar says Hilchas Rav Chista. He's going to pass him like Rav Chista, that says that you're only allowed to do a chafifa a day or two before if it's actually yomtiv in Shabbos when it's impossible to do. It. You can't do the chafifa on Shabbos. You can't do it on yomtiv. You can't heat the water. You can't do that, that sort of washing. And he's also accepting Rabbi Yemar, which is the extra Chumrah that he doesn't accept the Rosh Hashanah story to do it two days, to do it three days before. So he's taking all the Chumrahs. He's saying, I'm only accepting Rav Chizda. I'm, I'm accepting Rav Chizda that it only applies when it's actually the holiday, not when it's a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And I'm also accepting Rav Yemar that says, that it doesn't apply to the Rosh Hashanah, to the two days. It only applies to if it's a one, uh, if it's a, it, it, it doesn't apply to a three day holiday, it only applies to a two day holiday. They have a question. Is a woman allowed to do the Khafifa at night? We mentioned that the issue concerning this, that she was going to feel rushed. Marzutra says that it's forbidden, and Rav Chanina Misura says that it's uh, acceptable. Amale Ravada le Rav Chanina Misura. This is switched by the Bach. Rav, Rav Adam Misura says to Marzutra, it's very important that switch, because he's asking him a question. It's important that it's going to the right, right person, person, or else it doesn't make sense. He's telling it to Marzutra. Does La Vachia Vuvda be the Bisu da Abamari Reish Galusa? The Ikut. Wasn't there a story with the wife of Abba Mari, the Reish Galusa, that she was in a fight with her husband and she was refusing to use the mikvah? Azal Rav Nachman Lefusa. Rav Nachman went to make peace. Yeah, there's a lot of information there. <laughs> what do they call it? Too much. Yeah, TMI. <laughs> this is more than we asked for, right? Give him a he says to her, um, no, Ba'amrale, she says to him, Why are you coming now? Tiski, I see go and come back tomorrow. I can't go now, uh, I can't go to the mikvah for now anyway. So, Biyada, my Ka'amrale, Ka'amrale, and he understood what she was saying. And Amar, he says, Doidi Chasaita, Tashtaki, Tash, tashtaki chasalta. Are you missing a um, uh, a pot to heat up the hot water? Are you missing 
a um, Hashtaki says Rashi says some type of stool. Uh, to sit on Faldu stool. You see that? Feldu stool. What do they say in English? What's the uh, you don't have a, a, a street fix? No. Okay. Avdi Chasarta, you're missing servants to go eat the water. That means that Rav Nachman by Yitzchak was saying that even though it was at night, but you can get everything prepared at night as well. You, ha you have uh, servants that could heat up the water. You have the pots. Heat up the water and uh, do the chapit, and you can go to the next one. He also knows that if you push it off, you know, you never know. <laughs> uh, you know, these things, they uh, snowball. They're in the middle of a fight. Uh, just, uh, if you don't resolve it quickly, it, can only, it only gets worse. <laughs> Okay. Darash <laughs> Rava. They say 99% of uh, discord in the family could be resolved at early stages. And it, uh, it gets worse uh, when you leave it tested. Darash Rava. So the look is like the wife of her? Or like the so, well, he was saying, so he was saying it to Rav Marzutra, who holds that it's also to do it at night. Ravad is saying, what do you say, Rav Nachman by Yitzchak oh, so said that you can do it at night. Rav Nachman and the wife of Jerusalem. Uh, uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. So he was saying it to say that Rav Nachman by Yitzchak was, uh, was correct. <coughs> okay. Um, Darash Rava. Rava taught, Yishech if Efes Be'er of Shabbos v'tevel s'pumetzi Shabbos. She can do the Khafifa on Erev Shabbos. And oh, we're getting trophies over here from the. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And um, how about one for? He's got nothing to do here. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes to the mikvah. Mighty Shabbos. Amalei Rav Papa Rava. Rav Papa says to Rav again. Rav Papa is the student. Says Rav Vashalach Ravin be gaite. But Ravin sent us in the letter. I assume he's sending from Eretz Yisrael in the name of Rabbi Yechanan, as we're going to see soon. He says, "Isha loytach of perev Shabbos v'titvol v'meitzis Shabbos." She should not do that. She should do the chafifa at night, at uh, after Shabbos v'tamal atzmucha, and it's even a wonder. Hechif efes bayim v'tivelus balayla, even on a weekday. How does she do the chafifa during the day, and she goes to the mikveh at night? Well, <coughs> we don't want it to be rushed, so she does it like that. So she does it a little earlier, but but. Um, Otherwise, we would say that she should even do it, uh, do the Khafifa at night. So now you're going to say that she should do it on Erev Shabbos. And she should go to the mikveh a day later. That's way too far. Habayina, take it for Khafifa Tvila. You need to have the Khafifa right next. Take it, like immediately next to the Tvila, the Leka, and you don't have it. Hadaruki Rava, Amaira Lavadar Surava then sets up another uh, interpreter. And the Amira, which announces the halachas, and he says, "Tvarim shemart lefnechem toisem biyadi." What I taught, it was a mistake. Ram, the truth is that kacham ram mishmei der Rabbi Yechanan. They've said in the name of Rabbi Yechanan. That must be Rabbi's letter, which we didn't know it was in the name of Rabbi Yechanan. He says, "Yishal leitachav erev Shabbos b'titul b'mitzvah Shabbos." You should not do the chafif on erev Shabbos and go to the mikvah b'mitzvah Shabbos. B'tamal atzmacha. Even during the weekday, you have to do it right next to another. You don't have that. The Hilchas and Allah is Isha Chifefes Bayoim, that she does the Chafifa by day, but Tevelis Balayla, and she goes to the mikvah by night. The Hilchas and Allah is Isha Leita Chafela Balayla, that she only does it by night. This is one second. Kashi Hilchas Ah Hilchas Ah. You just contradicted yourself. Like Kasha Hadefsha Hadleyefsha. Depends if, you, if it's possible. Rashi learns that if you can do the Khafifa by day, because it's a weekday, and you do the Khafifa by day, and you do the mikvah by night, right? That right after shki, right after shki, or right after tzeis, you would go to the mikvah. Um, but if if during the day it's Shabbos, then you do the Khafifa by night because it's layefsha. You can't do it by day, and you don't do it the day before. You do it on Mitzvah Shabbos. I say we should go ahead. Let's go Especially ahead a little for bit. The, the, the day of Wednesday, Thursday, right. that you may only have five days on the plane or whatever before the plane. Right. I just want to say one thing here that is. Uh, 
that the Shi'ilte Sterabachai, Taisvis quotes, learns Hada Efshar Hada Le The Gemara doesn't spell it out which one is which. So he says Hada Efshar, when it's possible to do it by night, it's a weekday, then you do it by night. And when it's Le Efshar, because she's going to the mikveh on the Yom Tif or Shabbos, then you do it by day. The Chafif is always supposed to be by night. Not the way we've learned, not the way Rashi learned. But if the night is, is Yom Tif, she's going to the mikveh yeah, at night, sure. then she can do it Erev Yom Tif by day. Follow that. If she's Friday going night. to the mikveh Friday night or, or Yom Tif tonight, so she can't do the Chafif at night, so then she'll do it by day. The opposite of Rashi. Rashi was saying that you do it by day when it's possible because the day is a weekday. So you do it by day. That way she's not rushed. Okay. This opposite interpretations. Neither Shabbat guy, but do it go a little bit. Is that a, an airplane? I'm just doing eight o'clock today. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of weekdays. Okay. Neither Shabbat Kasma. I thought you're talking about the, 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 already about going to the sea. I'm talking about what type of plane you're going <laughs> to. I'm actually thinking about seeing. I was told there's a storm headed towards. Uh, no, 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 no. It's going to go on. Nida Shabbat Gatsi and Shviyi. Anida, she does a Badika on the seventh day in the morning. You may call this like a Hefsiktara. She's separating from uh, to see if she's finished with the bleeding. Shachris in the morning. Umatsa Taira, and it's, she finds that it's, the Badika was good. But she didn't do the Badika Benashmashas, which that's when right before the mikvah, she was supposed to see. However, So she went to the mikvah, and several days later, she finds that she's tummy. She did a bedika. She's assumed to be tar, because she checked in the morning and she was tar. So that continues on. The issue here was maybe she touched taharis in between. He says, taharis, food, produce. That could have made her, she could make it that tummy. So it says, no, it's considered tar. Now, the Gemara later on is going to go, the Mishnah later on is going to go back and say that there still is this regular Tomas Matreya that we're all discussing. We're just not saying that it's going back to, all the way to when she was Anita. Or maybe it's Mace Lace or whatever. Okay. Let's say she checked seventh day in the morning, Matzah Tumeya, and she's tummy. And she didn't check. How did she go to the mikvah? I don't know. And then she finds it uh, a little while later that she was tar. She's still considered tar. Because she never did a hefsik tara. She never found a clean uh, um, examination. I made it. Okay. Now it goes back. Now she explains it's going back on the first case of the Mishnah where we said that she, first she found herself Tahar and after a few days she finds herself Tame. It's still Metamalais Mesum Pida Pida and back to uh, an examination. The Mieshla Vesas, but if she did have a Vesas, then it would be Dayashaita, then it would just be from them. Rabbi Yehuda Imer, Rabbi Yehuda says, Kosle Fisha Betar Mena Mincha Lamaila Reis Cheskas Tameya. Rabbi Yehuda says that it needs to be done from Mena Mincha Lamaila, from the afternoon and onward. Let me take a look in the Mara. Come and say, even if she examined herself in the morning of the second day of her Nida period and found herself to be tar, thank you. And she didn't do an examination. And afterwards, she finds that she's tummy. There is a becheskas tara. So it doesn't even need to be on the seventh day. It could even be on the second day. 
Okay, now we have here a statement, uh, between Rab and Levi, but we don't know which case of the mission it's referring to. So, yeah, this is what you would say, there's moving, moving parts here. So we first we learn what's the machlekes, and then it's going to try to fit it in to different parts of the mission to see which one it's going to fit with. Itmar, Rav Amar Zavavadai. It was stated that Rav says that she's definitely a Zava, and Levi Amar Zava Safik. And Levi says that she's a Zava Yusaf. It says, ah, ah, <coughs> which part of the Mishnah is this statement of Rav and Levi referring to? Ilema Aresha. If we say it's talking about the first part of the Mishnah, the, Mish, the first part of the Mishnah says that she did a bedik in the morning and she was tar, and a few days later she finds that she's tamei. What do you mean she's a zava? She was she was a nida before. There was no ziva here at all. A few days later, yes, she finds one drop of blood. <coughs> well, how is she a zava bada or zava suffolk? It's not a, she, she didn't see for three days. Ella, Seifa. It must be the Seifa. Mm -hmm. What was the Seifa? The Seifa said that she found, she checked on the seventh day in the morning and she was Tame. And then she checked a few days later and she was Tar. So, Bishlam is Suffolk Zava. We can understand it. Why she's a Suffolk Zava, Amrinan. Why Suffolk Zava? Well, she never did a Hefzik Tara. She never found that she's Tar. We don't know. Maybe it's continued. But Ella Zava Vadai. Nami hare bad but she checked and she found that she's tar. What do you mean zavavada? This is impossible to be a zavavada. Mm -hmm. She she can't be a zavavada. When she checked later, she was tar. This statement of Rav and Levi was not stated on our mission. It was a separate statement. Itmar stated like this. Nida shabad katsum be mashvi shachus matzot meya. She checked on the seventh day and she's stomach. And she didn't check. And a few days later, she finds that she's tummy again. Aha. This case we didn't have in the Mishnah. In the Mishnah we had a few days later, she checked and she was tar. Here she checks and she's tummy again. Rav says that, look, she was tummy before. She's tummy now. It's three days apart. She's probably tummy. And the Vadai. Levi Amr <coughs> Levi says it's only a suffix. We don't know what happened in the middle day. Rav Amr Zavavadai. Rav says it's Vadai. Kim de Mikarnim to Tmei Vachsim to Tmei Tmei Vadai. Rav says, look, she was tummy before she's tummy now. That's considered a Vadai. Levi Amr Suffix Zava. Ema Paska Beni Beni. Maybe it stopped in the middle, the blood. And what Rav is saying is very, very. Right, you're thinking of a total possibility and turning it into a vada. So that's a big issue. That's a big issue because of a vada sounds like they're going to bring a carbon to me. A ech tanya car ech tavi carbon misafet. The taste was a rush. That's that. Even the kaimal and the kol yadam was a stunning. I don't know the explanation, but I'm satisfied because the taste was a asked the question. So that, at least I didn't learn it right. If he was asking the question. Um Tana Levi Bimasnisa, Levi we also taught this in a Braisa, Achar Yamim, Bain Badka Masatara, Bain Badka Masatme is a suffix of it. It's always gonna be a suffix of it, even if she found it that she's Tame, or whether she found that she's tar, we don't know what happened in between. Maybe there was no blood there, she can't be a stuff about it. Go a little further. Metama mm Mesle -hmm. is. And it's Metama Mesle is. The Mishnah says that this woman is Tame, <laughs> goes back 24 hours. When she sees that she's Allah um, Yamim, she checks and she finds that she's Tame. Name it every tuf to the Rava. This should say that this is a question on Rava. Rava said that since the 11 days between Nida and Nida is called Yamim Haru'uyim Luziva, the days when it's not supposed to have blood, it's, it's the days off from seeing. That's the Ziva days. So 
Rabbi said that if she finds blood during the days of Ziva, it's not metamal Freya, it's only from then and on, because it's not expected to her to see them. And now here, she's finding blood a few days later, and we're saying that it's metamal meis leis, it's going back 24 hours. The Kashan Rava, Amalach Rava, Rava says, Kiktani metamal meis, Arish Pirkin Kai. Rava's going to say, it's not talking about our Mishnah. It anyways doesn't fit with the second case, the Tam Meisleis. The second case was that after a few days she found that she was tar. It doesn't, it, it, it's going on the first case. It's anyways going back. Rava says it's not even talking about our Mishnah. It's going back on the first case of the Perak. We're talking about a girl that normally doesn't see blood. That here, possibly she saw blood. And then she has Dam Basulim. And we're saying that the blood of the Basulim are really tar. So what happens like this is that Let's say she saw blood and she's still in her father's house. That means before she's married. We know that she has Dam Basulam, and we say that that blood of Dam Basulam is Tahar. So in Velaitit Mamey Slaves, we can say that now the next time she sees blood, well, it's a new start. Maybe it shouldn't go back. To sit to be metamala mafreya, kamashmulan that it's metamala mafreya. Just because she had dambasulam in the middle doesn't change her period. It's, it, she had other blood that was taught. Kamashmulan, kamashmulan that it's metama meisleis. What's the shaila? What's the havamina that it should be that it should change her period? I don't know. Let's do one, another piece. In Yeshla Vesas, that if she has a Vesas, we say Dayashaita. Say that it doesn't contaminate retroactive. So it says, Name it every tip to the Rabuna Bachia. This should be a Kashan Rabuna Bachia, Dhammer Shmuel, Amar Shmuel, Rabuna Bachia in the name of Shmuel, Dhammer Rabuna Bachia, Amar Shmuel. Rabuna Bachia says, Name of Shmuel, Lima Shini Shkvasla Ves Mezivasa. A woman can't be Kavea Ves during the days of Ziva. Now, what's happening here is that. She saw, she was tar, um, she was tar on the seventh day, in the morning. She didn't do a bedika ben Later on, she finds that she's tummit. So, she doesn't, she's not tummy back to the days of Nida. She's tummy, um only 24 hours ago. However, if she had a vest then, then she's not metamala mafreya at all. The problem is, how does she have a vest if it's a few days after the Nida? That's a vest that was established during the days of Ziva. And you don't establish a vest during Ziva. There is no vest during Ziva. The vest is that the cycle is Nida cycle. So, and here we see that there is a vest. It says, Amalach Ravuna Barchia, Ki Amrina Neni Shekavas Vest Bimei Zivasa Dulei Bait Vasazim Nilemeka. We only meant that you don't need three times to get rid of a vest during the days of Ziva, because she can't really establish it fully. However, she's still chayshish. No, one second, that's not gonna make sense. What it means here is that you can't establish the vest. That means that you don't need three times to uproot it. But to say that it's diashaita, it's even more diashaita because it's assumed that she, was not, she doesn't see blood then anyway. And if she is seeing, it's only on the vessus that she's not really establishing, on this quasi vessus, which, which is suspecting in during the days of Ziva. So it's definitely diatite. It's definitely not going backwards. But there's two reasons here why it doesn't go back. Neither of them are perfect. One is it doesn't go back because during the days of Ziva, she shouldn't be seeing blood anyway earlier. And also, she shouldn't be seeing blood earlier because it's a quasi vessus that she's establishing it. Okay. Let's see, I didn't look at this, Kumar. Let's see if we, if we can get through this. Rabbi Yehuda, Imer, Rabbi Yehuda says that that she has to do a hepsiktarim in a mincha of the days of Nida. 
Tanya. Start in the Brisa. Amalei the Rabbi Yehuda. The sages said to Rabbi Yehuda, "Il mali yadam menachus b'ner kol b'ner shmoshes yafatayim." If you would say that she needs to have a pedika, the entire ben hashmoshes, then we understand what you're saying. Because you're saying that it could come mamish at the end, the blood, unless you're establishing at the very, very end of the needed time, then you don't know that it was really closed. The, 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 the it's called my, mayon, the, well, the spring. But, but, Achshav, Emer M. Silik Yederasa, Mali Afrisha Betara Bezayinman, Amin Chalmayla, Mali Afrisha Betara Berishan. What's the difference when you did the half Tara? Either way, you could say that right when she's taking out the, the cloth, the blood is coming right then. So what's the difference if it's the last moment and the blood comes a second later? What's the difference if it's on the first day? Is there such a person that holds that the first day you can do a half sikhtar? It says in, yes, we even have someone that says that. But Tanya was taught in a b'risa, in the, here's the b'risa. Amar Rebbe Shalti is Rebbe Yosef Rebbe Shimon. Rebbe says, I asked Rebbe Yosef and Rebbe Shimon Kishayim Alchem Badera when they were walking. Nida Shabbat Katzma Yom Zayin Shachos and Matzah Torah. She did an examination in the morning on the seventh day. And she's pure. Bein Hashmash Eslai Afrisha, but she didn't do an examination Bein Hashmash. It's Lachi Yom Badka Matzah Tmei Amal. And she checks a few days later and she's Tamei. Amr Lai. They said, Amr Lai is supposed to be. They said to me, this is Rebbe talking, Harezu Becheskas Tara. She's considered Tar of, oh, she's Becheskas Tar all of that time. Shishi, Chamishi, Rvi, Shlishi, Sheni, Mai. What about if she did a Hefzik Tara those days, the sixth, the fifth, the fourth, the third, the second? Amalei Leishna. He says, Barishan Leisha Alti. But on the first day, I didn't ask. But the easy Shlisha Alti, and I made a mistake. I should have asked. Atu Kululab Becheskas Tumakaimi. Are they not all the Cheskas because Anida, when her fountain opens up, it's open for seven days. Kaimil, even the Pasak, when it stops, Pasak, it stops. So we say that it closed. So Rishonami, even the Pasak, Pasak, it's the same thing should apply even on the first day. She should be able to do Hefzik on the first day. When we cut my suffers, what was he thinking before? That because on that day it was established that her fountain was open, she can't do Hefzik Tara then. But really, it turns out that she can do a hefsekara even on the on the first day, according to this. That's not okay. Oh. Let's leave it here. Yeah. Would it not be the halacha? It could be that it is. <laughs> we don't do this because of Thanks, the of that five days. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Shukayach. Right there ahead.